Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft commentary with EXO and uh, today I'm gonna be casting one of the one of one of those replays uh, from before the patch came out uh, not too long ago I think it's just uh, it's, it's not an old match uh, but uh, it hasn't really been cast I haven't seen it being cast anywhere and uh, I decided I'd do it because uh, actually apart from this one there's a bunch of good replays that haven't really been cast from the previous patch so I thought I'd do it because it's two really good players um, players that I enjoy uh, watching and um, yeah I said I'm gonna go ahead and cast this match so uh, here we go we got machine as the light pink zerg spawning at the two o'clock position and we have in control spawning as the red protoss at the seven o'clock position now um, these players uh, in control is uh, the clan leader of EG of evil geniuses you also might know that Hydra's in there and uh, QXC is in there from what I know as well uh, and machine is in there. I'm not exactly sure about machine, or maybe I'm confusing machine with KC. Anyway, one of these guys. Just go check if you if you're interested. Uh, but um, anyway, e Evil Genius is a, a very good clan, and as we all know, uh, Hydra did win MLGDC. So there we go. One of their clan members managed to win uh, a very important tournament in the United States. So um, yeah, but there's been a lot of buzz um, lately with the GSL. And uh, if you wonder, if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded some videos, well, yeah, I've been busy with GSL and stuff myself, and uh, uh, with my uh, GDZ SC2Inside.com. So uh, go check that out as well, by the way. And um, <clears throat> I haven't really had time. Also, I have a real life as well, as you guys uh, are so uh, probably surprised to know right now. And um, yeah, I haven't really gotten around to it, but here we go, I'm casting this match because I didn't want to let this one go. Uh, match from the previous uh, patch, so yep, don't want it to be forgotten in the sands of time. And uh, we have a pylon here, going down. Oh, and we might have a contain, I'm not sure if he's actually trying this. Uh, two pylon contain at the Zerg base, and we see three drones coming off the line. And he might, yep, forge is down, so uh, we might see a cannon right here, or two cannons. Let's see how much money he has bank up. Whoa, no, 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 no. Silly probe, silly probe. And there we go, photon cannon is going down. And another pylon is going to come up soon, I think. But there we go, the drones are hacking away at the photon cannon. And another one is going down right now. And, and, and let's see, that pylon, that photon cannon does go down. And bunch of Zerglings in here, but the Zealot is here as well. Let's see what the Zealot can do. He needs to micro this very carefully, but the photon cannon is warping in. So, yep, he does cancel it though. He sees too many Zerglings, too many drones here. But um, an okay effort, I would say. Still, four drones not mining for a long time. He was forced to get these Zerglings, and in control does have a Zealot out. Uh, actually, should should have maybe two Zealots out. Indeed, here's a second Zealot. So <clears throat> these Zerglings shouldn't really be a problem as long as these Zealots make it back home in time. One is already here. Uh, yep, and there we go. The classic Zelnaga, uh, I don't know, wall off sort of. Uh, build from Protoss that decides to build here close to their uh, natural expansion because this is kind of hard to defend you know uh, on, on this map it's, it's hard to defend your natural really uh, <clears throat> you don't really I mean it has three avenues and for Zerg this is really ideal to be able to hit you from every place and for Terran as well why not they have one of the best harasses harass tools in the game if not the best I think the best in my opinion so uh, Yep, uh, by the way, if you're wondering about the music in the background, yes, it is StarCraft 1 music. I like listening to it and actually listen to it when I play StarCraft 2. Uh, I think it's great uh, I think it's great music and I'm kind of used to it. I've been playing, I mean, I played StarCraft 1 in 1997, 98, and uh, I played it in high school, I mean, in, in primary after that and so forth. So this music is really synced in my head and I like listening to it. So, um... Yeah, we're gonna see if In Control decides to go for Colossus. Uh, it's really a good idea to go with Colossus versus Zerg, no matter what, really. Because Zerg will have uh, just that cluster of units on the ground, you know? It's just... Uh, it's, it's even... I mean, the, the, the worst thing I could get uh, is ground units are roaches uh, against you. But otherwise, if they get Zerglings or Hydras or even Banelings, or, uh, everything is... Uh, Investors, everything goes down really really fast to uh, to Colossus. So yeah, Colossus is always a good thing really to get against the uh, Zerg ground armies. Obviously, as well uh, as uh, as long as you have something to tank with, like Zealots and Stalkers, and you know a bunch of Gateway units. And uh, Storms are not bad either, because of uh, the way the army uh, Zerg armies work. They're clustered together, and they have to you know basically Zerg you to to get the damage. And so yep, but uh, we see the both 
the players macroing up and these rocks did go down so gold coming up for a machine uh, quite fast gold expansion quite gutsy gold expansion he doesn't really have the units to protect this one I'd say he only has a bunch of zerlings and he's getting more now uh, 12 more zerlings on the way and uh, already upgrades for the protoss player uh, he's researching uh, weapons level one so <clears throat> that's gonna be that's gonna be good lots of you know it's that's one of those things that you can actually get away with when you get this fast forge you know you, you already have it up and you can get those upgrades quite early um, well bunch of zerlings I don't know if these zealots will be able to fend this off maybe they have to stay together make sure the zerlings don't get the surround off and I'm not sure if this is actually this is a good position because the zerlings can not uh, get around the zealots like they'd want to but I'm not sure all four zealots would be able to attack as well anyway <clears throat> looking back at this natural more gateways coming up let's see how many gateways does he have yep indeed so four gates coming now warp gate research is on the way he's gonna wait with those gateways until he's gonna wait with these gateways on I mean he waited until the uh, the warp gate research was done he didn't really want to spend the money on it he'd rather probe up and defend his base make a few units and cannons around here but let's see what machine decides to do with these circlings. Uh, I don't think he, they're enough to really do anything over here. And he should consider maybe moving those zealots back. I don't really see why, why he should keep them here. Uh, there is no real reason to. And Spinecrawler going down here to help defend that more exposed uh, gold expansion. There we go, a second Spinecrawler. So, uh, taking a look, at, I'm just taking a look at the... Uh, Resource at yeah, the income so harvesters indeed. Oh, wow, 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 machine is really ahead 54 to 38. Indeed, this is uh, this is really going in his favor already on three bases. He's uh, mining like crazy and uh, a spire on the way. So let's see where he planted that spire over here. All right, so um, I, I don't see I don't see an observer though. Where is the robotics facility? He should get an observer for scouting purposes, although. I mean, it's pretty late into the game and still no observer 10 minutes into the game. Anyway, um, he's deciding to take these rocks down and probably gonna see a Nexus go down over here. The Overlord spots this. And uh, Machine could really use, since there are no Colossus, I think that the best thing for him right now, although this is before the Patch and Roaches weren't really the thing then. Uh, people tend to use them much more now because of the Rage increase. But um, back then, um, they weren't really uh, the unit you wanted to really have, but in this situation, I think they do quite good against both stalkers and uh, zealots. Even though there are these uh, these sentries, and sentries are really good against mass zergling because of those force fields. They basically cut your zergling off. The zerglings off. They can't get the surround off. They can't get through. They just get slaughtered. But um, yep, he's gonna go for uh, muta muta link bailing. I guess a classic, but no bailing nest up though. Nope. So just zerglings for now. Uh, although you don't really need bailings against Protoss, Zerglings are much better against Stalkers, especially. So it's better you stick with uh, it's better you stick with Mass Zerglings. So a lot of Zerglings. And another thing that you can th that's really good about this build is the fact that you will end up having this surplus of minerals if you go for a Mutalisk. You'll end up having a lot of extra minerals. So uh, you can actually filter those minerals into Zerglings, which is what Machine is doing right now. But uh, I would really like to see uh, Colossus and maybe Psystorm from in control because otherwise I don't really think he can do anything with this army composition. If the number of Mutalisk increases uh, and reaches a critical mass, a critical point, I don't really think there's uh, anything that machine, I mean, in control can do with these uh, with these gateway units. He has lots of gate, lots of gateways though. I don't disagree with getting lots of gateways, but I still think he should have some Colossus up. Two, three Colossus is good enough, and especially, I mean, Storms, Storms oh, against all these Zerglings, Storms, Colossus, anything really works. And these Mutas are going to move in here and try to harass, and let's see, no defense in base, really, just that cannon over there. And uh, he might just pull off, no, he decides to take to micro's Mutas away and take the cannon down, yep. There we go, cannon goes down, bunch of probes as well. Uh, there we go, second cannon, and that one goes down as well, so so let's see, oops, and that probe dying from the ricochet, and in control is moving now to counterattack while those mutalisks are harassing his base, he has a lot of zerglings here, more mutas, uh, 
on the way from your mute four more mutalisk plus these two mutalisk over here. So let's ooh Dark Templar and do we have an overseer? I think I saw an overseer. Yep, there it is. So here we go, force fields and not mm, yep, there we go. So that that did the trick. Zarkness can really get this round off. Just uh Yep. Uh, not really anything you can do with these Zerglings against those force fields and this expansion is most likely going to go down And this is an important loss, although I think he yep, he did save his drones But he needs to where are the mutas? There we go. There's the mutalisk uh, He needs to try a two flanked attack He should maybe surround and bring Zerglings from this side as well and this side and then decide to move in because otherwise I don't think uh, he can really do anything anyway this Dark Templar are gonna go down most likely. Yep. He spots a little a little blunder there in micro and look at those force fields these are such great force fields I mean what the hell blocking off the entire army but I'm not exactly sure if he can hold this off he has to kill the mutalisk right now he has to focus down these mutas with his stalkers and there's a bunch of zerglings left here and the force fields are wearing off and there we go great force fields but um yep he's blinking away good micro there with the blink good micro and 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 he looks okay he is pulling back though he needs to pull back, he needs more... Oh, yep, so he doesn't get Zealots, actually, he gets Dark Templar. Now, this is interesting, I like this. And, um, uh, the gold expansion is going up again for Machine. Wow, interesting battle, very exciting over there, I like that. <laughs> and the uh, Machine getting a second hatchery at his natural for extra larva production. Uh, I, I really like this, um, in later stages, no matter, actually. Any, any time, at any time in, during the game, I like that uh, extra hatchery over there. But let's see, in control needs to start getting uh, a, th a third expansion if he wants to produce off this many gateways. And uh, he should maybe, maybe really consider Colossus. Uh, I don't know, Col Colossus is really something great. And, uh, whoops, some overlords getting sniped over there. And Roach is moving in, he should start blinking away. Let's see if he does blink his stalkers. Just getting some extra shots off. There we go. The blink goes down, and that blink can, you can actually see how useful this is. It's not useful just for catching up, but for getting away. It's really good. <clears throat> and stalkers do move fast, so if you do blink out of danger, it's most most likely that you're gonna actually get away for for good and not lose your forces. But um, let's see if he's getting no no just dark shrine, no Templar archives, nothing on the way, and lots of upgrades for the Zerdi. You can see over here, it's like. Borrow uh, attacks level one, uh, roach roach movement speed on the ground, and uh, armor upgrades level two. A lot of stuff going down for the Zerg, and not that much for the Protoss player. And uh, in control decides to go for this expansion over here, the gold one. I guess probably not just because it's gold, but because he wants to have a foothold closer to the Zerg. The Zerg, um, the Zerg side of the map, because uh, he wants to be able to preempt, uh, to preemptively 